This presentation will cover how to connect and power up the CVX200 series vision system. Unpacking the components. When you receive your new CVX vision system, you may be overwhelmed by the different boxes of stuff that you received. The goal of this presentation is to show you the contents of the main components that make up the system and how to get them all connected and powered up. There may be some differences in the actual parts that you received, but all the main components are very similar no matter which controller or camera that you received. This picture shows the contents of the CVX200 series main controller box. The actual part number may vary depending on the type of controller that you received. The box will include the main controller itself, a USB mouse, a DVD with support files and software, and a brief instruction manual with some basic wiring and such. It is suggested that you read over this manual before installing the system. This picture shows the contents of the Vision camera. The part number will vary depending on the type of camera that was purchased. The box will basically contain the camera and a brief instruction manual. Again, it is a good idea to read over this manual before installing the camera. This is what the camera looks like on the connector side and the isolation mount that is affixed to the bottom of the camera. The isolation mount can be affixed to any of the four sides of the camera depending on the situation using the four mounting screws. This base provides electrical isolation for the camera and should be used if at all possible. It has a standard quarter 20 mount as well as some threaded 4mm holes for mounting. This is an example of what the camera lens looks like. This can vary depending on the actual focal distance and type of lens that was purchased. Pictured here is the CALH16 lens, which has a focal distance of 16 millimeters. No matter which lens you purchased, they will all have an aperture adjustment ring and a fine focus adjustment ring. These will be adjusted when setting up the actual camera image. This is the contents of the CADC30E light controller. It contains the main light controller itself, a spacer unit which is required for installing onto the vision controller, and a brief instruction manual. It is a good idea to read over this instruction manual before installing the light controller. There is a notice sticker on the side of the light controller that explains the mounting with the vision controller, including the spacer unit. You can remove this sticker after reviewing the mounting diagram. This is what the new Lumitrax light looks like from the top. The actual size of the light that you have purchased may vary. In, the, in this example, it is the CADRW10X light. It has an electrical connector with a sticker that illustrates how the light should be mounted according to the camera. This is very important if you are using the Lumitrax processing. You can remove this sticker after reading the instructions. There is also a small instruction manual included with the light. Please review that before connecting the light. For your reference, this is a view of the Lumitrax light from the light emitted side, showing the curved diffuser. The light can be mounted using the threaded metric holes on the top of the light. There are four threaded holes to use, as you can see by the dimensions here. They are metric 3 or metric 4, depending on the size of the light that you received. The CADX cable is used to connect the Lumitrax light to the light controller. The part number will depend on the cable length received. The one shown here is the standard 3 meter version, which is the CAD3X. There is a round connector on each side, which is the same, so you do not need to worry about which side goes to the light and which side goes to the light controller. This is what the standard camera cable looks like. The standard 3 meter camera cable for the Lumitrax cameras and all other high speed cameras is the CACH3, but there are a few other lengths available as well. There is a round connector on one side which will connect to the camera, and a rectangular side which will connect to the CVX main controller. One cable is needed for each camera that will be connected. The next section will cover how to connect the light controller to the main CVX vision controller. The first step is to remove the sticker that covers the light controller connection on the left side of the main CVX200 series controller. This is on the same side as the I.O. connections and the power terminals. You can discard this sticker at this point as it is no longer needed. 
The next step is to affix the plastic spacer that's included with the CAADC30E light controller. Align this on the side of the CVX controller and then tighten the two screws indicated here in red. The spacer is required for the installation or the light controller will not mount correctly and fail. You can now attach the CADC30E light controller to the CVX200 main controller. Align the light controller with the spacer already mounted and tighten the two screws indicated here in red. If more than one light controller is going to be added, just repeat the same, same exact steps installing the next light controller to the one that was already mounted. Be sure that the spacer unit that comes with the light controllers is mounted in between each light controller as well. This picture shows the front view of the CVX200 series controller with the CADC30E light controller properly mounted. The next section will show how to connect the Lumitrax light to the light controller. Mount one side of the CADX light cable to the Lumitrax light. The connection is keyed so it can only connect in one orientation. Once inserted properly, tighten the cable in place by turning the metal ring of the connector. Connect the other side of the CADX light cable to the CADC30E light controller. Again, the connection is keyed so it can only go in one orientation. Once the cable is in place, tighten it by turning the metal ring of the connector. The light controller has two light connections so it can handle up to two Lumitrax lights. Also, it's very important to only connect or disconnect these lights with no power to the controller or you can damage the lights or controller. The Lumitrax light is now properly connected to the light controller. This section will show how to connect the vision camera to the CVX200 series controller. Connect the round end of the CACH camera cable to the camera. The connection is keyed, so look at the connections and match up the key before inserting. Use caution as not to bend any of the pins of the cable. When the connector is properly in place, hand tighten by turning the metal ring. Connect the rectangular side of the camera cable to the camera 1 port on the CVX200 controller. Confirm the orientation of the connector before inserting. There is a short and longer side of the connection. Match this up to the controller and affix the cable. If you need to remove the cable, squeeze the two latches indicated here in red on the connector and remove. Repeat this for camera 2 if there is two cameras. To mount the lens to the camera, remove the plastic protective covers from the lens and the camera, and then affix the C-mount lens to the camera. Carefully line up the thread of the lens to the threading of the camera, and screw the lens in by hand all the way in. The lens is now mounted to the camera. Now that you have the camera and lights attached to the CVX200 controller, this section will show you how to power up the system. Connect the mouse that is included with the CVX controller to the USB port labeled mouse. You can also attach the optional touchscreen monitor or your own monitor to the standard monitor port. The video signal output from the monitor port is a 1024 by 768 resolution. Any PC monitor that can accept this resolution can be used to view the CVX screen. All the programming can be done by using this mouse and the connected video monitor. The CVX200 series controller and the CADC30E integrated light controller are both powered by 24 volts DC only. If you have purchased the optional CAU4 power supply from Keyens, this picture shows the contents of the package. It has the power supply unit and a small instruction manual. If you have purchased this optional unit, please read over the instruction manual before proceeding. Otherwise, be sure to install your third-party power supply according to the manufacturer's instructions. It is re recommended that the vision system be powered by its own dedicated power supply. If you are using the optional Key and CAU4 power supply, the wiring is shown here. Remove the clear plastic terminal protective cover to access the terminals. On the input side, you will wire up your incoming AC power. Wire the line side of the AC power to the terminal labeled L, indicated by the black wire in this diagram. 
Then wire the neutral side of the AC power to the terminal labeled N, indicated by the white wire here. The green wire in this diagram should be wired to the protective earth ground of the building installation. On the output side of the CAU4, there is two terminals. The plus 24 volt DC is the terminal labeled with a plus, indicated by the brown wire here, and the zero volt terminal is the one labeled with a minus, indicated by the blue wire. The plus 24 volts DC and the zero volts DC will be wired to the CVX200 controller and the CADC30E controller for the in input power. Reattach the clear protective terminal cover when the wires are fully secured. The C CAU4 power supply can supply up to 6.5 amps of 24 volt DC power. If you are using a different DC24 power supply, then wire that according to the manufacturer's instruction. Do not turn the AC power on until all the other wiring is complete. To wire the power to the CADC30E light controller, there is a 3-pin connector block that can be removed to install the wires. Using a small standard screwdriver, loosen the terminal connections. Then, insert the appropriate wires into the connector and tighten the connection using the small screw heads. The plus 24 volts DC output from the power supply should be wired to the terminal labeled 24V, and the zero volt DC output from the power, supp power supply should be wired to the terminal labeled 0V. The FG, or field ground terminal, is not required, but can be wired to the protective earth ground. Reinsert the connector block when the wiring is secured. The CVX200 series controller has dedicated input power terminals on the lower left side of the controller, as you can see in this picture. Out of the box, it will have a warning label indicating 24 volts DC only. The input power to the CVX controller can only be 24 volts DC. Any other voltage will damage the controller. Remove the plastic protective cover on the input power terminals to access the terminals. You can loosen the terminals and remove the warning label at this point. The terminal labeled 24V will be wired to the plus 24 volts DC output of the power supply. The terminal labeled 0V will be wired to the 0 volt output of the power supply. The third ground terminal can be wired to the protective earth ground. Once the wiring is secured, you can reattach the clear terminal protector. At this point, you have all the basic connections made and the input 24 volts DC wired. The system is ready to be powered up. Of course, you will mount the camera and light according to the application, but the system itself is ready to be powered up. Perform a final wiring and connection check before turning on the power.